Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're going to talk about Lucid trading under the ticker symbol LCID. It has been one of the most speculated stocks in the Nasdaq. Some have said that it could be the next Tesla, while others believe that it's just going to be a giant bubble about to burst. Lucid is one of the few companies that has an actual product rolled out. And as time went on, the stock price action, along with investors' hope, went through a lot of roller coasters, and some are still wondering if this is a bandwagon that they want to hop on. In this video, we're going to look at Lucid and to see if the stock still deserves to have a place in our portfolio. If you appreciate my content, please consider to drop a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Also, please check out the links down in the description section as every help is greatly appreciated. So Lucid, a luxury EV manufacturer, recently reported lower than expected delivery numbers for the second quarter, which led to some concerns about the actual demand and a potential decline in the company's popularity. And what we know for sure is that whatever the popularity might be in the future, the stock price in the present really took a nosedive. The delivery figures for air sedans fell short of the analysts' consensus, which rose issues or questions about the company's ability to meet demand and convert reservations into actual orders and cash inflows. So the stock price of Lucid experienced a significant decline following the delivery update. Over the past year, the stock has seen a decrease of about 60%. Yes, 60%. Reflecting investors' worries about the demand for air luxury sedan, which has a higher price point compared to many of its competitors. Regarding the production, Lucid produced around 2,100 air sedans in the second quarter, which is slightly lower than the previous quarter. The company's conservative approach aims to produce between, I would say between 10,000 to 14,000 airs in this year, despite having a significant backlog of reservations. So in order to manage costs, Lucid recently has reduced its workforce by almost 20%. Now, despite those issues looking ahead, they're still having some you know, positive progress. The company entered into strategic partnership recently with Aston Martin, uh, which supplies them with EV powertrains, battery systems, and related technologies. And Lucid, on the other hand, will receive phased payments and a stake in Aston Martin, which is very interesting. Both Lucid and Aston Martin have um, the PIF's backing. Lucid is expected to release its second quarter results in early August, and that'll provide even more insights into the company's financial performance and the efforts to address demand concerns. Um, Investors and a lot of like stakeholders in this industry will monitor the production targets very closely and they want to see if this time they're going to fall short of the expectation once again. So basically, Lucid Group's delivery setbacks and concerns about the demand are challenging and they are symptomatic of what's going on in the EV market. It's getting more competitive. It's also it might start to feel the beginning of a recession as well. So the company's ability to overcome these challenges are going to be key for the long-term success. Let's also take a look at the technicals. The trading volume of Lucid has been around 51 million shares versus the average volume of around 62 million shares. Over the previous 52 weeks period, the price fluctuated between $5.46 and $21.78. The volume of shares traded tells us how many shares are being bought and sold at any given point in time, and if there's enough liquidity to support a trading strategy. With a very thin float, I would say that it's easy to influence the stock price around, but with low liquidity, it could also mean that the demand will be limited. 
When we compare the current volume against the average volume, there might be the possibility for trend reversal or breakthrough if the difference is very large. Like, for example, if the stock were to break through, the current volume could be significantly higher than the average volume. The market cap of Lucid is around $13.6 billion versus the enterprise value of slightly lower at $12 billion. As we compare the current price to the historical price fluctuations, the stock is 30% higher than the one-month low, 30% higher than the three-month low, and 30% higher than the 52-week low. On the options market, it seems like the implied volatility is around 90%, which is similar to the historical volatility. The put-call volume ratio is currently at around 0.31, it is normal for many stocks to also have a higher put option volume than what they truly deserve. So in this case, I would say that even if, like we can say that Lucid has um, more people who believe in it than the, op the, than the other way around, I would say that this ratio is relatively high. Like quite a few people believe that, well, we might as well just play safe and to buy a put option contract just in case the stock dips. Um, and this may also have something to do with the fact that there are many more institutional investors with Lucid and they want to hedge their position. The most recent volume of options traded is around 135,000 contracts versus the 30-day average of 180,000. In terms of open interest, the most recent volume is around 1.2 million contracts versus the 30-day average of 1.1 million contracts. In terms of the shareholder structure, institutional shareholders own around 73% of the current float. And this is very significant for a like an EV manufacturer. Because it's always good to see a lot of institutional participation in a stock if you want to invest in it for the long term. And that kind of tells me that Lucid is a company that is worth to put some money into for the long run and to basically just buy and forget. So the current short interest is around 24% of the total float and 55% of them are coming out from the dark pools. This is above the 15% threshold that is typically set for many stocks in terms of like to determine whether those companies are having a concerted shorting operation going on. And in this case, I believe that there are a lot of institutionals who are shorting Lucid and they believe, and they could be right or wrong, but they believe that Lucid will have a very hard time ahead of itself. Lucid is an EV manufacturer that is poised to shake up the industry with the cutting edge technology and designs. While other EV companies have been making strides in the industry, Lucid Motors stands out with its advanced battery technology, aerodynamic designs, and commitment for sustainable business model. So, in addition to the advanced technology and design, Lucid is also committed to sustainable business model by using the renewable energy sources to power the production facilities and wants to reduce its environmental impact throughout the life cycle of their vehicles. This commitment is what separates the company from other competitors, in my opinion. Another factor that makes Lucid Motors standing out is the focus on luxury segment. The company's first vehicle, Lucid Air, is a vehicle that is spacious and comfortable, coming with advanced drivers, assistance systems, and many other luxury features. When we look at the long-term tendencies of Lucid price action, it's not hard to see that the bubble that gave so much hope to traders around the world is now bursted. The market is no longer willing to blindly follow the latest hype, because on one hand, the market doesn't want to persist on believing that a beautifully made PowerPoint is better than a good financial report. On the other hand, it cannot afford to sustain the trend when supply chain issues, doubt over flagship companies within the sector, conflicts around the world, higher interest rates, and a looming recession have already been plaguing the real economy out there and also the narrative. The market has long predicted that there will be a bearish market 
after such a prolonged bull market and that most stakeholders believe that it's going to be a rough patch for the next couple of years. The market peaked twice in the past and if the first peak was caused by pure hype, the second one was triggered by the rollout of actual products. Lucid remains a company that has investment value in the years to come. The main question in everyone's mind is when should they enter in the stock? The long grind to lower price levels is likely caused by the market trends rather than the company fundamentals. So in that sense, things are not as alarming as they may seem. On the other hand, we should remember that sometimes, even if those grinds don't have an actual fundamental reasons, they may still last for a very long time and bring the price to very low levels. Hylions and Paysafe are excellent examples in that case. Lucid had a strong financial performance in 2022. The company reported revenues of about $200 million in Q3 of 2022, a significant increase from just $232,000 of revenue in Q3 of 2021. This strong revenue growth was driven by the launch of Lucid Air, the company's first vehicle, which began deliveries in late 2021. The Lucid Air is a luxury electric vehicle that has been well received by consumers and that has helped establishing the company's reputation as a major player in the sector. Currently, they still have a negative net income, mostly caused by the fixed costs and other operating expenses that should be absorbed once the volume starts to pick up. Overall, Lucid's financial figures paint the picture of a company that is growing its operations but lacks a little bit in discipline and cost control needing to scale up the operations to start having positive cash flows. Now, let's also cover the shareholder composition in Lucid, because this is a very important factor to determine if the company is better for trading or investing. Lucid is currently held by the institutional buyers, for the most part, at more than 70% of the total float. This suggests that the price volatility of Lucid will be lower than other growth stocks, mostly owned by retails. The reason why this might be the case is because institutional shareholders have far more diversified portfolio and can afford to wait, so they don't mind the short-term volatilities. They also tend to stay in for a longer period of time, which is also a good sign for those of us who want to stay for the long run. Some key behavioral differences between institutional and retail shareholders include their investment horizon and also their level of involvement in the corporate governance. In other words, institutional shareholders tend to behave as if they own the company for real, that they are the ones deciding what is going to be the company's decisions, whereas the retailers tend to just behave as speculators. We come in and we aim to make more money than when we first entered in the stock, and this is the end of it. They don't see necessarily like the potentials of the money that there is to make 5 to 10 years from now. Whereas people managing other people's money can sometimes have this kind of opportunity to wait. The short interest of Lucid has been increasing in recent weeks, meaning an increasing number of investors are wondering whether it's a good time to sell the stock. Short sellers borrow the shares from brokers and then they dump it in the market, hoping to buy them back later at a lower price and making the profit from the difference. In the case of Lucid, there is a significant amount of short selling, but in my opinion, it's not sufficiently significant to say that there is a concerted short operation going on against Lucid. So I would say that this has to be put as a secondary reason at most. It's important to note that the short interest may not guarantee a short squeeze, but nevertheless, it's a metric worth monitoring. It's also worth mentioning that people shorting the stock often have a good reason doing so and that a short squeeze may not happen regardless of how many stars are being aligned. So considering the recent performance of Lucid and the available information that we have, my recommendation is that if you have a long-term investment horizon and believe in Lucid's technology, it may be worth considering buying Lucid shares. On the other hand, it's very important to, to like approach it as a long-term investment strategy rather than a short-term speculative play. Because for those who already hold Lucid shares, um, it's 
definitely worth it to keep a close eye on the company's updates. Monitoring the demand for, like, what is the actual demand for uh, Lucid Air, the development of other cars as well, such as their Gravity SUV, um, and so on. So check on those and see if you're comfortable with holding on it. Personally, I am. And that may also have something to do with the fact that the exposure that I have in Lucid to begin with is very low. Now, holding on your Lucid shares aligns with the long-term approach, but at the same time, like, it's also not for everyone. Like, the risk profile of Lucid is certainly higher than most blue chip stocks. But that is, that is basically the reality of most NASDAQ titles. Now, if you're considering in investing in Lucid only for the short-term gains, it's very important to be careful because the recent volatilities and the uncertainties around the electric vehicle markets uh, should bear some red flags. Short-term trading can be very risky and it's essential to conduct research and to understand what you're getting into. So for example, right now in Lucid, uh, I would say that it, if anything, the short-term price is likely going to go back. It is likely going to get lower, right? Just because there will be a retracement coming in, there has to be some kind of steam let off and essentially just maybe not a good time to think that Lucid is going to keep going up. Um, it at least needs to catch a break. And if not, to go through another cycle of bearishness or sell-off before coming back. 